Now the supply of labor is uh, said to be upward sloping. And the reason the supply of labor is what it is is because there's an underlying presumption of the opportunity cost of workers. That is, there's going to be some worker who has one worker who has an opportunity cost uh, equal to OC1. Uh, well, that worker is not going to come on to the market unless uh, that worker gets a wage that fully compensates him for his or her opportunity cost. That worker may uh, add more labor to the market, but it's not going to do so uh, until uh, the wage rate goes up. The reason is that you can imagine any worker thinking about adding successive units of labor, successive hours. The first uh, a unit of labor offered is going to be offered and the worker is going to give up the least valuable activity that he or she uh, has as an alternative. That means that the worker wants to um, uh, offer more work on the market. It's going to have to give up something that is uh, even more valuable and as a result uh, its opportunity cost goes up. Or you can think of it in terms of additional workers. That is, we must raise the wage from say W1, which is here, uh, to W2, which is here, because in order to, we're going to be pulling all in workers who have successively higher uh, opportunity costs. Moral of the story is, if you have a wage equal to W3, then workers can justify offering up to Q1 units of labor. Uh, this worker can, can easily justify working because his or her opportunity cost is OC1. The wage is greater than that, so the worker in a sense makes a profit equal to that distance. The same is true of this worker, and this worker, and this worker, and so on up the line. At a wage of W3, um, this worker is not going to come into the market simply because the worker's opportunity cost is up there, the wage is here. There would be effectively a loss in welfare equal to that, to that gap. So the moral story is supply curves are upward, slo are upward sloping because of the presumption of increasing opportunity cost as more and more labor uh, is brought into the market. Well, the supply curve of labor can in fact increase and it can do so uh, on the grounds uh, that the opportunity cost of workers um, uh, goes up. It could also uh, increase because of the working conditions improve. That is, this just becomes a nicer place to work, which of course means that the opportunity cost of workers is, is uh, declining. And um, uh, here we have a decrease in supply of labor and uh, it can decrease because the opportunity cost of workers uh, declines. Well, here we have the upward sloping uh, supply curve. We've talked about the uh, downward sloping demand curve, which gives us a, a graph that, uh, that has become fairly standard here, where you have a downward sloping demand for labor, upward sloping uh, supply curve. We know that the wage rate in the competitive market is going to move to that level because if in fact you have a wage above W1, uh, you're going to have a surplus of labor and the labor is going to uh, fall. We know that if the wage rate is below that, you're going to have a shortage of labor and the wage rate is going to be bid up to W1 uh, quantity uh, Q1. Well, we can take this uh, graph and begin to ask uh, why do wage rates differ? Well, it, they could differ uh, because the, the um, productivity of some worker groups is greater. The price of their final product can be the same, but their productivity is greater. As a consequence, uh, workers, employers might be willing to pay one group defined by demand curve D2 more than they pay another group defined by uh, demand curve uh, D1. Uh, and they can hire more of the more productive workers. It could also be uh, that this group of workers gets a higher wage rate because the price of the final product incorporated uh, into this demand curve is, uh, is in fact greater. That is, the workers can be equally productive in terms of the units produced, but the value of the final product can be uh, greater. 
Well, it might also uh, be that the uh, wages differ because of supply uh, considerations. That is, um, one job might have certain onerous uh, benefits. Another job might have very favorable uh, benefits. The result of which is that the supply for one group of workers with the favorable benefits is uh, S2. The supply of those with onerous benefits can be uh, S, S1. Those who work in uh, the favorable, the market with favorable benefits would suffer a, um, a wage decline, but yet they would have more employment opportunities. Uh, does it follow that the workers who have the lower wage are necessarily worse off than the workers who have the higher wage? Well, if in fact this vertical distance between S1 and S2, A, B, is an indication of the, of the special benefits associated with the S2 market, then no, it doesn't follow. It could very well be that those who are earning the lower wages are better off than the workers who are earning the uh, higher uh, wages. And um, uh, this is the case because these workers, W-2, I mean, earn wage of W-2, and they get these benefits. And as a consequence, when you take the uh, W-2 uh, wage and add to them the favorable benefits, favorable working conditions, uh, their, their overall effective income becomes uh, W-3. Now you may want to, might wonder from time to time why uh, academics uh, tend to earn lower salaries than their counterparts in the outside world. It is very clear that uh, professors of accounting uh, earn less than uh, their PhD counterparts in, in accounting firms. Uh, why is that the case? Well, it can very well be the case uh, that uh, the accounting professors uh, uh, have the flexibility of determining, determining their own research uh, uh, work. They get to work with aspiring uh, students. Uh, they may have a more pleasant campus atmosphere than many uh, uh, accountants who are out there uh, in uh, tall, uh, tall buildings. And these accountants in tall buildings oftentimes are told uh, what their workday is going to be like. Uh, as a consequence, in order to compensate the accountants in tall buildings, you've got to pay them more uh, than the accountants who work uh, in, in academics. I thank you for being with me.